Hannah here. We're so excited to be back and continuing our Upside Down series. Wait a second, where's Pastor Ryan again? Let's go find him. Pastor Ryan, are you down here? Miss Hannah, where have you been? You said we were going upside down. <gasps> What are you doing upside down? So we're starting the service, so I've been going upside down. You are crazy. I didn't mean actually upside down. Dad, I think I'm going to pass out. No. We got to go upstairs. Right, Let's I'm, go I'm start coming. the service. Good morning, boys and girls. Pastor Ryan and Miss Hannah here. How's everyone doing? I guess everyone's asleep. Hello? Hey, there they are. Hey, we're continuing our series called Upside Down, Jesus Changes Everything. We are on week three. We're talking about that big word called humility. Humility is just a fancy word for putting others first and being selfless. Now, it's really easy to be selfish sometimes, right? And to only think about ourselves. And that's why it's called Upside Down this month because Jesus wants us to be the opposite and live the opposite. And that's by being selfless and caring about others. So we're gonna watch this month's Live Loud again. What's it like to feel humbled? Oh, that's not a word we use every day. But it's humbling when you receive a gift you didn't expect. It's humbling when someone says you don't have to pay even though you messed up. It's humbling when your dad takes an entire day off of work just to spend it with you. It's humbling when you see an incredible sunset and realize that God handcrafted it with you in mind. Wow. Being humbled makes you feel small in a good way. It makes you feel grateful. When someone chooses to put you first like that, it can make your day. So. Why not do that for the people around you? You can choose to give up what you think you deserve to put others first. Let your sister pick the family movie even though it's your turn. Skip the pool party so you can hang out with your friend who broke his leg and can't go. Use some of your birthday money to help a family who doesn't have enough to eat. True humility is thinking of yourself less and others more. When you live your life with humility, you bring praise to God. You lift him high because others can see God at work in you. That's why humility is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. I love that video because when you put others first, it can really brighten their day and make them feel special. <laughs> Amen to that, sister. All right, we're gonna jump into a time of worship. So we want everybody up off their feet. Doesn't matter if you're in your slippers or your pajamas. We love praising God and giving him everything we have. So let's jump into worship.
and kindness for grace that is endless love and forgiveness i wanna say thank you for mercy and kindness for grace that and girls the more you participate the more fun you're gonna have I think it's time for a game you know what pastor Ryan I think we should play one of my favorite games tiddlywinks no one with the bottle spin the bottle Ooh. no that's disgusting I'm talking about the one where you flip it ah oh, come on that's so boring I hate that game I'd rather play Mario Kart on Wii by myself Ugh. Aren't we talking about putting others first? You're being so selfish. April Fools, Miss Hannah. I would love to play your boring game. It is not April Fools, Dad. Miss Hannah, the month of April is April Fools. Yeah, April 1st. Well, why didn't you say that then? April 1st? Wouldn't it be April 1st day? No. April Fools? No, I've been pranking wrong. people all month. I put that scorpion in, in my dad's dresser the other day. So. It, it's only supposed to be on the first All right, side. so we're going to play Miss Hannah's favorite game, the bottle flip game. Is that your favorite mm -hmm. game? So it's when you, you got to grab a bottle, you can play with us like a water bottle. You're going to have it half full, and whoever flips and takes the least amount of flips to get it upright is going to be the winner. Is that what we're going to do? Yeah. All right, let's go. Team Smarkalaklis. That's my team name. Team <clears throat> winner. All right, whatever. Bear, you want to try? Ready? Flip it. Ready, bud? Oh, oh so bear. close, bear. Try it again, Bubba. Aww. Oh. One more time. You got it, baby. You can do it. Ready, 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 ready? Oh! oh. oh. Hey, bear. He's scared. <laughs> Nala, you want to do it? Nala's ready. Ready, girl? Ready? Ready? Ready, girl? <laughs> ready? Ready? Do you see it? Why are you wearing a robe? <laughs> are you ready? Oh. Ready, Nala? <laughs> well, that was fun. Hey, we're going to jump into our Bible story for the day. I think the person telling the Bible story video looks pretty familiar today. Is that right? Mm, maybe. Let's find out. The Bible. It's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 3 through eight. Jesus' life and death and resurrection changed the way everything works. It changed how we view others and how we treat them. One of Jesus' followers, a man named Paul, wrote about it in a letter to the believers in a place called Philippi. Don't do anything to get ahead. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. As you deal with one another, you should think and act as Jesus did. Jesus was equal with God, but Jesus didn't take advantage of that. Instead, he made himself nothing. He did this by taking on the nature of a servant. He appeared as a man. He was humble and obeyed God completely. He did this even though it led to his death. Let's imagine how this truth might play out today. Angus McCrane had been up since 5.30 a.m. for his job as a school bus driver. After three morning routes, he skipped lunch to clean up throw up and a spilled soda from the back of his bus. Yuck. 
Then there were three afternoon routes, a whole stack of paperwork waiting for him at the bus garage at the end of the day. So by the time he got home, he was starving. He couldn't wait to dig into his ribeye that he had picked up from the store. <laughs> Gonna fire up that grill right away. While the grill heated, Angus prepared some baked potatoes and sauteed green beans. Mmm. A little salt, a little lemon. Doo -doo -doo. Then he seared the steak to perfection and slid it onto his plate alongside the fluffy baked potatoes and crispy green beans. Mmm. Ah, thank you, Lord Jesus, for this food. Amen. Angus sliced off a quarter of the sizzling steak and skewered it with his fork. Ah. <laughs> but before he could take a bite, Oh, for goodness sake. Ugh, with a regretful glance at his steak, Angus headed over to his front door and opened it. His new chipper neighbor Marge stood there holding an enormous Siamese cat. <sighs> Hello, Marge. I am so sorry to barge in, but I just found out about a super last minute work trip and I don't have anyone to watch Boris while I'm gone. Angus just stared at the cat and the cat just stared back at him smugly as if he knew Angus hated cats. Well, I, I gotta tell you, you know, I've never been around cats much. Oh, that's no problem. I've got everything you need right here. Angus looked past Marge to see several bags and boxes, plus an entire carpeted climbing tree. So, could you do it? Angus glanced sadly at his quickly cooling steak, and he could see Marge was a little desperate. Well, okay. It took Marge nearly 10 minutes to explain every little detail about Boris the cat. Finally, Angus was alone with his steak and Boris. Yeah, better keep those fuzzy paws away from my dinner, you hear me? But before Angus could take a bite... Ah, what on earth? Angus jumped off and hurried to the side window. He could see exactly what happened. Ah, that boy. Zachary Kershaw was a kid who lived next door. He loved sports, but didn't have good aim. He already dented Angus's car with a baseball and destroyed a patch of petunias playing soccer. And this time, it was a rogue football that hit the window. Huh. At least it didn't break the glass. Angus saw Zachary scrambling to make his escape. As he tried to hop the fence, he stumbled. <laughs> Serves him right. When Zachary got up, Angus could clearly see that he had badly gashed his knee. Angus sighed, oh, thought about his steak, and opened the window. Zachary! Oh, sorry, Mr. McCrane, I I'm leaving. No, 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 just hold on a minute. We gotta clean up that knee. So Angus grabbed his handy dandy first aid kit and headed outside. It took him another 10 minutes to clean out all the dirt from Zachary's scrape. He had it all bandaged up, and finally Angus sat down for dinner again for the third time his steak barely warm. But before he could take a bite, Ooh, that don't sound good. Angus ran to the front window. It had appeared that the neighborhood ice cream truck had swerved to avoid Zachary, who had run into the road to chase his football. And now the truck had a flat tire. You have got to be kidding me. Angus opened the front door and headed down the sidewalk. The poor teenage driver was checking out the damage. It's my first day on the job. I wrecked the truck. They'll fire me. No, no, no. It's just a flat, son. You wait right here. With a deep sigh, ugh, Angus headed back to his garage and grabbed his handy-dandy toolkit and showed the teenage driver how to remove a tire and replace it with a spare. Thanks. I'd totally give you an ice cream sandwich, but they might fire me for giving stuff away. Angus wiped the grease off his hands and watched the ice cream truck drive down the street. Speaking of ice, his dinner must be ice cold by now. Excuse me? Angus jumped a mile to see Marge standing behind him. She was wearing oven mitts and holding a hot apple pie. Steam seeped from the cracks. I can't eat this since I've got to leave. I thought you might like it. Well, glory be. 
Angus inhaled the heavenly smell. Mmm. First I interrupt your dinner, then you help that kid next door, and now changing a flat, you sure put others first. Ah, I don't generally feel like doing it, but uh, thank you. Angus happily accepted the apple pie. This time, he would be putting his dessert first and reheated his dinner in the oven. Now, it would have been a lot easier for Angus to just eat his dinner and ignore all the people around him that needed help. But little by little, God was helping him serve others, just like Jesus did. Hey, what a great story that reminds us that we should put others first, even if it messes up our plans. Angus had that awesome, delicious steak, and he had all those people that needed his help. And you know what? With God's strength, he was able to help them out, which was awesome. And uh, Miss Hannah, was that you in the Bible story video? What are you talking about? That girl looked nothing like me. All right then. Hey, boys and girls, if there's one thing that you remember today, it's that Jesus puts us first, right? So we should always put others first. Jesus gave everything for us. He died on the cross for our sins and he put us first. And that is the ultimate form of humility. He gave up everything for us so that we could have a relationship with God and go to heaven. So when we wake up every day, we can think of living like Jesus and putting others first. So we have a challenge for you this week. Maybe you can go out of your way to help someone in need before they ask or do the dishes before your parents ask or maybe let your brother or sister choose the family game um, this week. It's, it's just something that you can do with humility, right? Just going out of your way to treat others the way you would want to be treated. So we're going to close out with prayer. Miss Hannah, do you mind praying for us today? Not at all. Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Father, for this morning. God, we thank you for every child that's watching this show, God. And we just ask, Father, that you would bless their week, God, that they would draw closer to you, Father, and that they would reflect on this message, God, throughout the week, that they would be transformed by you and that they would start to put others before themselves, God, the way you did for us. Lord, we love you so much. We ask this in your awesome name we pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls, it's been so much fun hanging out with everybody today. We do have a few quick announcements. We want to shout out Natalie Johnson for sending in her artwork to the church. Great job, Natalie. And hey, to our Harbor kids, if you want to FaceTime with us, Pastor Rodney or Pastor Brittany, you can go on the church's website, The Harbor LI, or you can email the um, office at The Harbor li.com and set up a time where we can hang out and just see how everyone's doing so hey we hope that you have an amazing rest of the day thanks for letting us hang out with you guys for a little bit and we will see you next time bye